One of these young ladies is a national hoop spinning champion. What is your name, please? My name is Connie Hagedorn. What is your name, please? My name is Connie Hagedorn. What is your name, please? My name is Connie Hagedorn. Two of these young ladies are imposters. Only one is the real Connie Hagedorn and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Now, here is our host, Bud Collier. again to, to tell the truth. Now may I introduce our panel. What is your name, please? My name is Polly Bergen. My name is Tom Yule. My name is Kitty Carlisle. My name is High Gardner. <laughs> Tom, awfully nice to have you back with us. We missed you. Thank you, bud. Come back and see us as often as you can. Now, as you heard, these three young ladies all claim to be Connie Hagedorn. Only one, of course, is the real Connie Hagedorn. The other two have merely assumed her identity, and they are the ones who do not have to stick to the truth. Panel, will you please follow along with your copies of this first affidavit as I read it? I, Connie Hagedorn, am a national hoop-spinning champion. In my first major competition, I set a world's endurance record by spinning a hoop without stopping for 10 hours, 1 minute, and 9 seconds. At the present time, I am the national trick hoop spinning champion. When I won this championship, I was invited to make a guest appearance on Art Linkletter's television program. I do many tricks, but the most spectacular is my spinning 20 hoops at the same time. Signed, Connie Hagedorn. Okay, panel, you heard these three lovely young ladies all claim to be Connie Hagedorn, national hoop spinning champion. Now, only the real Connie Hagedorn, of course, is required to answer your questions truthfully. Each of you will question until you hear this signal, and at the end of the questioning period, I will ask you to cast your ballots for the one who, in your opinion, is the real <coughs> Connie Hagedorn. So let's start this first round of questioning with our guest for tonight, Tom Ewell. Oh, uh, number three. It says here that you... Went without, uh, you went without stopping for 10 hours, one minute, and nine seconds. Didn't you stop to eat? I ate candy bars and soda pop while I was spinning. <laughs> Number uh, two, what did you eat? I ate um, hot dogs, candy bars, and soda pop. I see. You added to it. Number one, what did you eat? I ate soda pop and candy bars. Must have been some sloshing around is all I can say. <laughs> Number one, where are you from? Royal Iowa. Royal Iowa. Number two, where are you from? Royal Nebraska. Number three, where are you from? Royal Arizona. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle, please. Number one, you spun a hoop here, it says, uh, 10 hours. Uh, how long did your nearest competitor last? Oh. About four hours and some. Who came in second, number two? Uh, a boy. <laughs> Never underestimate the power of a woman. <laughs> number three, what do you use in the way of technique? Do you use a round hip motion or a front and back motion? Because I'm longing to learn this. I use front and back. My daughter uses a kind of roundabout motion. Show, what us, what, show us what you mean, Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> I tried it on the beach last summer, and all I got was a terrible sore thing inside. <laughs> I got sore inside. I, I don't know, know why I got sore inside, but I did. Uh, number one, when you spin your hoop as long as you did, do you get sore? No. Hi, Gardner. Uh, number one, where, where was the contest held? Oh, sometime in September. I mean, where, dear? Oh, at a Swanson supermarket in Spencer, Iowa. In uh, Spencer where? Iowa. Iowa. Uh, number two, uh, what newspaper ran uh, pictures of you when you became the champion? Uh, the Times. What Times? That was the uh, What city, I mean? Oh, uh, Spencer. Spencer. Uh, number three, don't you think that, that Art Linkletter looks a little bit like Tom Yule? No. Do you, number two? <laughs> Do you, number one? No. You don't? 
folly. <laughs> well, number one, I think it's terrible to take innocent young children and teach them to be liars. That's <laughs> um, and number one, what made you decide to take up hula hoop spinning as a profession? Well, <laughs> I just started out. Everyone else had one. Number two, you... <laughs> <laughs> That's an easy two, way to meet yeah, our link letter. Of course. Number two, um, uh, what made you finally stop uh, after 10 hours and something? Well, it was getting late, and my parents wanted me to stop at the phone. That's all the time we have. It's time to vote, panel. I'd love to continue this, but without consultation now, will you please mark your ballots? And of course, in so doing, you will select number one, number two, or number three. Remember, the team of challengers will get $250 for every incorrect vote. Okay, panel, have you marked your ballots? Polly, for whom did you vote this time? Well, I have the vaguest idea, really, who it is. I, I picked number one because she said she was from Royal, Iowa, and she said that the thing was in Spencer, Iowa, and number two said it was in Spencer, too, so I figured she was nearer to where they held the contest. <laughs> oh, very good. Go so far. Uh, Tom, what about you? I voted for number three because she looked to me like that she would have more places to put 20 hoops. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty, your vote, please. I voted for number two because she looks like my daughter, Kathy, who's a great hoop spinner. Uh-huh. And Highgarden. Well, I voted for number one. I at first thought it was number two, but like Tom, I, I don't think that if she had 20 hoops at one time, she'd disappear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we have our votes and the reasons why we voted the way we did. And let's see now how right or wrong we were, and maybe you at home are, too, if you're playing along with us. We trust you are. Uh... So, we'll find out now which of these three young ladies is the national hoop spinning champion. Will the real... No, let's do it another way. Uh, will you three young ladies each come out and stand in front of your desk, please? And take your hoops. <laughs> All right. Now, will the real Connie Hagedorn please take all 20 hoops? to show us and go, but I detect only uh, 18 hoops there. I have two more here. <laughs> okay, young lady. Can we have a screen up here? I counted her out at 15 minutes yesterday. She was so proud. How are you at this, Polly? I tried it a couple times. Yeah, do, can it. You do it. Come on out and do it. Oh. Come on. <laughs> one, one. You want one, two, or three? I've taken off my belt. Hey, watch this <laughs> stuff. <laughs> okay, let's see what you can do with it now. Oh, I haven't done it. Oh, my daughter will kill me if I say that. <laughs> <laughs> Atta, girl! Like they used to say, would you like to try for 20? <laughs> can, we, can we wait till we find out about the other oh, two? Oh, sure. I'm just going to say, this gives Polly Bergen the biggest hooper in television. <laughs> oh, right, 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 it does. Number two, would you tell us who you really are and what you do, dear? Yes, my name is Roberta Manning. I live in Manhattan, and I go to the PS19. And number three, what about you? My name is B.J. White. I come from Summit, New Jersey, and I go to Brayton School. Well, let's check up on the score. We find that there were one, two incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $500 from Marlboro ladies. And on your way out, you will find uh, one of our To Tell the Truth games out there to take along home with you and uh, play To Tell the Truth during the week sometime if you want to. And thanks so very much for being with us. Hope we didn't exhaust you, young lady. Good night and good luck. Thank you. 
Incidentally, we'd like to thank our friends at uh, station KGLO-TV for sponsoring Connie Hagedorn in the national championships. KGLO-TV in Mason City, Iowa. Our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Robert Crawford. What is your name, please? My name is Robert Crawford. What is your name, please? My name is Robert Crawford. All right, panel, will you please follow along with your copies of this next affidavit? I, Robert Crawford, am a colonel in the United States Air Force Reserve. I was raised in Alaska and was working as a gold prospector when I was 16 years old. I left the territory soon after that to go east to study music. For the 10 years while I was a concert singer, I was known as the Flying Baritone, since I flew my own plane to all my engagements. To while away the time on these flights, I composed songs and wrote lyrics. In 1939, on a 45-minute flight between Bridgeport, Connecticut and Trenton, New Jersey, I wrote the words and music to a song which is now the official song of the United States Air Force. I am the man who wrote, Off We Go Into the Wild Blue Yonder. Signed, Robert Crawford. At this time, panel, we have three gentlemen all claiming to be Robert Crawford, composer of the Air Force song. Let's start this round of questioning with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, bud. Number one, were you in Wing Victory? No, I wasn't. Number two, when you were um, uh, prospecting for gold, did you dig it or pan it? Panned it. When you pan it, what do you use? Pick and shovel. Oh, I thought that was like digging it. Pick, <laughs> shovel, and a pan. Huh? Pick, shovel, and a pan. Uh-huh. Number three, who is the head of ASCAP? Paul Cunningham. Number one, what is the line after into the um, flying high, into the sun? Uh, flying high into the sun. What's the next line? Um, Number two, what's the next they... line? Number three, what's the next line? Flying high into the sun. Here they come. <laughs> run, run, run. Okay, hi. I got it. Instead of asking questions, Kitty, would you continue the song? Maybe we... <laughs> uh, pirates or something. Number three, uh, what was the U.S. Uh, Air Force known at the outbreak of World War II? By what name? Army Air Corps. Uh, number, number two, what Army Air Base uh, you flew from Bridgeport to Trenton? Uh, uh, what was the uh, air base near Wrightstown, New Jersey? Would you know? Uh, number near one, Wrightstown? I'm sorry. I don't know of any near Wrightstown, New Jersey. I don't know where Wrightstown, New Jersey uh -huh. is. Number one, would you know? Well, it was on Fort Dix. Uh -huh. Number three, Polly? Number one, um, what particular thing inspired you to write uh, Wild Blue Young? That's Young. easy, the thousand dollar prize. <laughs> oh, they, they were giving a prize for the person who wrote it. Oh, I see. Liberty Magazine had a contest, and they offered $1,000 for anyone who could write the, an Army Air Corps song, and that $1,000 was very appealing. I, I can understand what you mean. <laughs> Number two, uh, uh, where did you study? It said you, you studied, uh, went east to study music. Where? Conservative music in uh, Kingston, Ontario. Kingston, Ontario. Ontario. Uh, Number three, uh, as an ex-Alaskan, what does November 25th mean to you? Our election day. Tom, number one, how much was gold a pound when you were prospecting? I don't know, offhand. Number I was only 16 years old, I don't remember. I see. Uh, number two, uh, what was the name that they called Alaska in this country, the sort of the nickname when it was first bought? Alaska, as far as I know, I don't know. Number three, how long does it take to go by ship from Alaska to Seattle? What part of Alaska? Well, say Juneau. Juneau would take two days. Did you ever ride anything on the boat? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Val, once again, it's time to vote. Hope you have enough information because there'll be no consultation and just mark your ballots and select number one, number two, or number three. Everybody voted? Okay, Polly, for whom did you vote? Well, uh, 
number three I voted for, he, he seemed to come up with an awful lot of answers, and uh, he was very careful in his answering, like he wanted to make sure that he didn't make any mistakes, which is not what you can say for all the contestants. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Yule, your vote, please. I voted for number one because while you were reading, they started playing the Air Force song, and number one kind of smiled a little bit, and I know if I'd written it, I would have smiled, too. <laughs> Kitty, your vote? I voted for number three because he could follow the line that I talked about in the Air Force song and because his voice sounds like a baritone to me. And what about your vote, hi? Huh? Well, I voted for number two principally because, uh, in a very hesitating fashion, number two did drop the name of Wrightstown, and that was the, the town closest, the gate, to the Fort Dix Air Base uh, back in 42. I spent an awful lot of time there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we have it. Now we have voted, and we trust you have, and we're about to find out whether we were right, whether we were wrong, or just... All of us mixed up in every way possible as we find out which one of these three gentlemen is the actual composer of the Air Force song. So will the real Robert Crawford please stand up. Mr. Down, if you will. Number one, would you tell us who you really are and what you do, please? Uh, my name is Louis W. Blesser. I'm from Lindbrook, Long Island, a former advertising salesman with the Dell Publishing Company, and I'm now retired. <laughs> and number two, what about you, sir? My name is David Scott. I'm president of Movie Producers Technical Service in New York. And checking up here, we find we have the same score as before. Two incorrect at $250 each for a total of $500 from Marlboro. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed your visit. We enjoyed having you here. And on your way out, you'll find a carton of Marlboros waiting for each of you. Good night and good luck. Now, we'll get back to the game. Now, panel, let's have our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Mickey Spillane. Oh, Mickey Sullivan. What is your name, please? My name is Mickey Sullivan. <laughs> what is your name, please? My name is Mickey Sullivan. your copies of this affidavit. <laughs> I, Mike Hammer, a Mickey Sullivan, am the head football coach of Wagner College, Staten Island, New York. This, this is unusual only in the light of the fact that I am a licensed private detective and the full-time president of one of the largest detective agencies in New York City. I have been interested in football since I played at college. As coaching assistants, I have a member of the crew of a New York fireboat as line coach, and as backfield coach, a prominent Staten Island foot doctor. Signed, Mickey Sullivan. <laughs> These uh, three gentlemen, at least two of them, claim to be Mickey Sullivan, <laughs> private detective football coach. And let's start this cross-examination with High Gardner. Hi. Well, uh, number one, uh, I was with Mickey Spillane the other night. He had a Jew right, I the jury. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> uh, number two, what is the present fare on the Staten Island Ferry? It's five cents. Uh, number three, what uh, famous uh, TV radio columnist in a New York newspaper at one time uh, played football in Staten Island for the Stapleton Giants, I believe it was? Bill Shakespeare. Uh, uh, number two, would you know? That would be Mick Kenny. Uh, and number three, what private detective was famous for, for retrieving stolen jewels primarily? No scaffer. Uh -huh. Polly? Number three, uh, did you have a, a good record this year? 
Well, that, that depends. Do you mean as a private detective or as a football coach? <laughs> as, a, as a football coach. Well, we had a fairly good record. I see. Number one, um, do you have a license to carry a gun as yes. a detective? Um, number two... As an author, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> number two, uh, does your team play uh, any of the, the big colleges? No, we play mostly the smaller colleges. Well, what's the biggest one you play? Well, Moravian is the last game. I'd say that's one of the biggest games, Moravian College. Mm -hmm. Tom, mm. number one, your assistant coach who's a foot doctor, does he get paid for coaching? Yes. Oh, I thought maybe he did it just for kicks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> What a night. What a night. Number two, uh, what is the first quality you look for when you hire a detective? Well, you, uh, you look for certainly an honest man and a man that is willing to work hard. I see. Kitty? Number one, what is the name of your detective agency? The Oceanic. Oceanic? Number two, I suppose as a detective you have no trouble finding out the other team's signals. <laughs> what well, is the fox lock? Pardon me? What is a fox lock? A fox lock? Yes. I don't know. Number three, what is a fox lock? A fox lock? lock is a burglar lock. It's a lock with a rod that goes to the floor, that goes behind the lock, and when you leave, it has a place in the floor and a place behind the lock, so you can't Thank push you the very door. Much. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to go through that again? Our time is up. I'm sorry. It's time to vote. We just locked ourselves in. So will you please mark your ballots and select number one, number two, or number three. All marked? Holly, quickly. Well, I was sure uh, it was number two, but number three knew what a fox lock was. Well, hurry up. All right. <laughs> uh, Change it if you well, want to. Well, well, well I, I'll vote for number two. Uh, I didn't hear Hyde's question, but when he said Nick Kenny, uh, is that, was that right? Well, that's what he said. <laughs> oh. No consultation, I vote for number two, but I'm positive it's number three. All right, Tom. I had to go with the fox lock. All right. Number three. And I Kate? voted for number three because of the fox clock, too, but I think it's number two. <laughs> That's the switch. Well, okay. I voted for number two, though Scaffa was correct and the fox clock probably correct, but I think uh, anybody who knows that Nick Kenny once played football uh, uh, must know a little bit about football. And, and Nick Kenny, uh, you might remember, was probably the only player who ever tackled with his nose. Do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we have it now, our rhymes and reasons. Let's see how well we made out as we discover which one of these gentlemen is the real detective football coach. So will the real Mickey Sullivan please stand up. Thank you, sir. And uh, number one, aside from being Mickey Spillane, <laughs> who you really are and what you do, please. My name is James Bowles. I'm the manager of an New York State Unemployment Insurance Office. And you like detective stories. <laughs> <laughs> and number three, what about you, sir? My name is Daniel P.A. Sweeney. I'm an attorney and I practice law in New York City. I don't know why he didn't know what a fox lock was, but we haven't got time to find out now, I'm sorry to say. We checked the score and find that they were, again, the same as before. Two incorrect votes at $250 each uh, for a total of $500 from Marlboro. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Hope you had fun and uh, pick the fox lock on your way out and you'll find a carton of Marlboros for each of you and a copy of Mickey Spillane for you, sir. Good night and good luck. <laughs> Congratulations, you had three out of three tonight, and I want to tell you that I sent someone out to ask our uh, real fellow that last time why he didn't know what a fox lock was. He is a dock detective. Security is mostly their line. They don't have anything to do with departments or locks or apartments, I should say, or anything like that. So that should explain it a little bit. And uh, Tom, thanks again for being with us. Thanks, bud. I've enjoyed it. I got none out of three, but I had a wonderful time, and watching <laughs> Polly was worth it. Worth it all. <laughs> okay, well, that's all for tonight, so good night, panel. Good night, good night bud. Bud. Now, this is Bud Collier saying good night for reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. To tell the truth, it's a Mark Gibson, Bill Cotton production, in association with the CBS Television Network. This is done by Wilma.